one. Hello, this is Ed Close with the next in a series of videos explaining the triadic dimensional vortical paradigm shift. The purpose of these videos is to spell out step by step how consciousness is included in the equations describing physical reality and to show that by doing so we discover how consciousness shapes the various forms of reality we experience. The dictionary defines physics as the original natural science, the study of matter and energy. Before Planck, Einstein, and Minkowski, physics was simply the study of matter, defined as anything that has weight and occupies space, and energy, defined as the forces that act upon matter. But when Planck discovered that energy is quantized, that is, energy only occurs in multiples of a quantum unit, and Einstein discovered that mass, the measure of matter and energy, and the measure of force are interchangeable at the quantum level. With Minkowski's math, physics was changed forever. The work of Bohr, Heisenberg, and Schrodinger led to the discovery that matter, energy, and the consciousness of the observer are intimately related and entangled at the quantum level. With these discoveries, particle physics has to be redefined. How are true units related to particles and waves? Planck's discovery of the quantized nature of energy and by equivalence of mass means that every object having weight and taking up space consists of a whole number of multiples of the smallest possible mass energy unit. In the last video, we discussed the true unit. In redefinition of particle physics, we begin by identifying the mass and volume of the smallest known amount of the substance of reality. That's the mass of the free electron. The free electron spinning at near light speed possesses the smallest amount of mass and thanks to the relativistic limit on spin velocity, the smallest volume of any of the elementary particles that make up the physical universe. For calculations involving elementary particles, the true unit is set equal to 1. When defined in this way, the true unit becomes the standard of quantum measurement and the substance of all elementary particles is then measurable in whole number multiples of true units. I've been asked, well, isn't the true unit simply an electron? In a word, no. The true unit is a mass energy volume equivalence unit. Confusing the true unit with the electron is like confusing the pound with a physical object that weighs a pound. This question allows me to make an important point. Equivalence and identity are two different things. Confusing equivalence with identity leads to subtle errors, like the one pointed out in the previous video. Particle collider data indicate that protons and neutrons have the same amount of mass as combinations of up and down quarks, not that they contain those particles. Confusing equivalence with identity leads to imagining that there are discrete entities called up and down quarks existing within protons and neutrons. This simply is not the case. Experiments like the double slit experiment and the delayed choice experiment tell us that at the quantum level, particles do not exist until they are created by conditions of observation and measurement set up by conscious observers. When not affected by the conditions of discrete observations, the substance of the particles is integrated in spinning forms that are symmetric and geometrically stable. In stable atomic and subatomic structures, the substance of reality is integrated in these symmetrically spiraling, spinning 
massive units. Discrete particles and waves are only observed when the stable structures are blown apart for observation, as they do in the particle colliders. The mathematics and logic of the calculus of distinctions reveals that reality exists in nine finite dimensions. This means that the particles that we perceive in three-dimensional observations may be spinning around multiple axes of rotation. We normally think of particles like electrons as spinning around one axis, like a top, but our understanding of the dynamics of particle physics and our interpretation of particle collider data changes radically if particles are actually spinning around two, three, or more axes of rotation. We need to see what happens when a stable object, an integrated stable object spinning in multiple dimensions, is blown apart. So in the next video, we'll find out how observations of spinning objects change if they are spinning in more than one dimension. So please join me in the next, at the next video. Thank you.